the order. Please rise for the flag salute. Chief Cahill, please start the flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please lead us in the flag salute. I know. Thank you. Okay, Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Here. Mr. Maybrack? Here. Mayor Holtzman? Here. Pursuant to the Open Public's Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. Unfortunately, on July 10th, there was an incident on our beach. So at this time, I would like everyone to please take a moment in silence in memory of Jalen Alston and his family. Next, Commissioner Creeble will do a presentation for all the staff that were involved in the incident in the Atlantic Ocean off of Victoria Avenue on July 10th, 2020. Commissioner Creeble. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, on July 10th, um, Lisa Tony, it's on mute. It's not letting me do it. Okay. Um, to name each individual, there were over close to 90 individuals from all four cities on the island. And in addition, uh, state police and the Coast Guard were involved. And just to, to summarize, there were 15 Bender City Police Officers, 14 Bender City Beach Patrol Command Officers and Lifeguards, four Bender City Department recall personnel and from the Fire Department, two Margate Police Department personnel, three Margate Fire Department personnel, three Margate Beach Patrol personnel with two jet skis, uh, five Longport Fire Department personnel with two Marine vessels. One other, uh, they do have a, an older Coast Guard boat. It was very helpful. Um, five Longport Beach Patrol personnel with two jet skis, two Atlantic Care paramedics, uh, 11 Atlantic City Fire Department personnel with two jet skis and an observation drone, two Atlantic City Beach Patrol personnel with jet skis, uh, one Coast Guard helicopter, two U.S. Coast Guard Marine vessels, and one New Jersey State uh, Police helicopter. I was um, also on the scene and was uh, very impressed with professionalism of uh, everyone there. Um, Chief Cahill assumed co incident command um, and uh, to go into some of the things that they did um, to, to try to recover and then uh, to try to rescue and then eventually recover uh, was um, a very impressive set of skills, um, including uh, doing things like uh, going to the Oxford Avenue high rise to get a high ground to, to to scan the beach and the ocean. Um, they formed two water search line chains stretching from the beach out approximately 100 yards, uh, searching in two teams and uh, con converging um, in an area that, we, that uh, they thought that the gym was, was in. Um, but again, it, uh, it's a very sad day and it's uh, sort of uh, an unfortunate reminder that we should all um, respect the ocean and then we should all uh, only surf for protected beaches because it's very, uh, even with the quick response time and the unbelievable professionalism and dedication that all of these uh, public servants show, it, um, we need to remember those two things, respect the ocean and uh, swim at the protected beaches. Thanks. Well, since Chief Cahill's here and you were in command, do you have anything to add? I believe all the units that were on scene operated in really good uh, communication. We all worked together. We had a common goal. Um, we did the best we could in a short time frame before it got dark. And uh, I'm just sorry that we were not able to come to a successful uh, conclusion in that rest of the 
Um, it's, it's, it's happened before, it'll happen again. People just have to understand that the ocean is a dangerous place. We did our best. Yes, it's beautiful, but it's dangerous. You have to respect it. I have to, I may, I have sure. to echo Commissioner Kriegel's uh, credit to our, our team, chief leadership there. I was able to get down to beach soon after he was there just to watch these guys and the professionalism that, that everybody exhibited. Uh, there were, what the chief said, 90 some people there, and all knew what they were supposed to be doing. In different jurisdictions, different lifeguards from all, all over the side um, were there. And, you know, it's a shame, but it, as you said, it's a reminder. Of, first of all, there's a tropical storm just went through here. Don't go in the ocean. Don't go in the ocean. Don't ever go in the ocean when you're not in front of a lifeguard. After hours, you've got you to listen to that. You know, it, it, it's a shame that this happened. But something that can be avoided in the future if you, if you swim where you're supposed to, when you're supposed to. But thank you to, the, to all the first responders for what they, they tried to do there that day. Yes, thank you. Just if I can say one more thing. Sure. Um, I was super impressed with the response from the beach patrol. The, the guards came back from a group chat notice that went out. And they came to the beach to do what they could do. They weren't ordered back. It's not the procedure to come back for that. But 14 of those kids came back and worked with us for hours. Dedication. They're, They're dedicated. A bunch of kids. Yeah. Very sad. Okay. So uh, we don't have any department head reports or capital discussion. So we will break out to our executive session for the public. We usually do this at the end of the meeting, but um, it's on a uh, situ it's on a possible resolution to be voted on tonight, and the uh, people are here for if we have any questions. So unfortunately, we have to ask the public to leave the chambers. You just sit out there and um, it shouldn't take too long. And then we'll have you come back in, okay? Want to indicate that we discussed one matter in executive session. That was a matter that touched on both contract negotiations and attorney client privilege. Um, I believe that no formal action will be taken now. And that was just, and I should indicate the time is now 5 59. Okay. Motion to go back into regular. Well, so Second, I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Get back into our workshop portion. Um, Dean and Sean, we discussed the um, contract and the commission has um, come to the conclusion that you need to get the workman comp insurance and come back to us with that and then we will revisit it. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. But you're considered employees, and without the working comp, the city could be liable. And we, the commission, are we're not in a, we do not feel comfortable putting the city in any position to be liable. Okay. Uh, 
so stoner for our concern as a camp that we would have a host that was part of our recreation department. They were so concerned over COVID that they canceled. So our concern is that someone that did the camp, one of your staff, you would call, please whatever you call, either gets hurt or gets sick. And they see the city because we have a tier camp and they want to be first in there for their time. That's our concern. Um, we, we have, look, we'd love to have some here. here. We love that at this time, but it's something that we can't municipalities because you know, then coming in to run a program doesn't have that insurance. Uh, we don't want to put that liability on our residents. But that's that's neighbors have the COVID release in it. Um how about how about, how about we Yes. Yeah. Get the workman's comp, and then we, we'll be. Then we'll. Then we'll be okay. The contract will be fulfilled on our end, or your on your end for us to be comfortable. Can, can, you know what? Oh. Okay. Right. right. Mayor, Mayor, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mayor? Yeah, wait. Kim's talk. Yes, I can hear you. Can you have them? Are they at the microphone? They can go to the microphone. Dean, can, Dean, can you go right up to the microphone? Okay, he's there. Yeah, so I'm curious. Put out the situation when we get it, we can be put in the I, Were you able to hear that, Tim? I, I was not. Okay. What, what he's asking is, can we, if we vote on it tonight with the stipulation that they get the workman comp, once we get the workman comp, the votes are already done, so they won't have to wait two more weeks for another meeting. That's correct. Am I correct? Yeah. That's what he's asking. Yeah. So, so the answer to that question is, you can vote on it tonight, subject to workers' comp, but it has to be workers' comp that is approved by uh, the city and the city's insurance advisors. In other words, I don't want Dean to misunderstand, get a workers' comp policy, and have kids at the beach the next day before the city of Ventnor has reviewed it. Do you understand that, Dean? So it's got to be approved workers' comp insurance policy. You can't just, this is really annoying. So it has to be approved by Tim and our Yeah, I'm going to be able to here when they get approved. Get all that up the boat, really clear them. I get that and I bring it, you guys find it, and we're good to go. Right. Yes, yeah. we can do that. We can vote on it tonight. So you'll have to wait for us to do a regular meeting yeah. do a vote. And it'll be contingent yeah. on you guys. Yeah. Exactly. Can you hear me? Tim McGuire? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, we spoke uh, briefly, and, and um, uh, Dean answered the question, but I'd like to hear your answer to the question. They have, uh, knowing how the surf camps work, there's a number of uh, we call them in our surf camp, um, uh, what do we call them? Uh, instructors or, or advo uh, camp um, counselors. Um, will, they're saying that in their camp, their version of the camp, that they are paid because of how much they're paid, they're not, <coughs> their liability as, uh, isn't the same as an employee and that they would not need to be covered under workman's comp. Now, I understand that anybody can sue anybody for anything, but does that hold water in your mind as far as uh, not requiring these uh, camp counselors, which how many of them do you have? I just have one of those schools in Let me prevent or how many would you have? How many years? How many, camp, how many other associates would you have working with you at the beach and vet? It's just me and Sean for now, and then we hire if we need somebody, we have some assistance that we so we have a couple on, on call. Three or four or six? And then we have, we have two on call. Two. Yeah. 
So those other two individuals, they're saying would not be on this workman's comp. Is that, well, is that no, satisfactory? Does that make that's sense? Talk, that's something they'd have to talk to their insurance agent about. The way it works is I would, let me, let me, let me hear his answer. But I would think they would have to get covered. And, and here's why. Because I know that some businesses try to label employees as not employees, but as independent contractors. Uh, the most famous example of this is pizza delivery boys. Uh, for a long time, a lot of pizza places labeled them as independent contractors. The state came in and said, well, no, you can't do that. They're employees and they must be covered under employees compensation. So I'm not, I'm certainly not going to say without knowing all the facts, yeah, that's okay. You can go ahead and do it. I think what you have to do is get a workers' compensation policy and list all those people. Uh, if there's some way that your insurance broker can discuss with us something else, I mean, we'll entertain that. But my position would be they'd have to be covered under the workers' comp insurance. Thank you. Okay. So that's part of the requirement when we get to that point. That they would consider that as well from your broker. Okay, so on my short term, we got one. Right. Okay. All right, we're good. We're going to proceed with the meeting. All right, thank you. Okay, so can I ask a question while we're struggling with this Zoom and live meeting? Um, I think part of the issue is these things as well. The, the, the recording that we do like a normal meeting. Because we're recording this on Zoom, do we also have to have that on as well? No. I don't know if it's a question for Tim or, or for Lisa. Or, I don't know. It, it seems I've, I've done now probably 20 or 30 public hearings. Never have this issue. Never. <laughs> The, the feedback, feedback is, yeah. and yeah, you know, uh, you're going to get the feedback because you know, of granted, we, the, they're not both Zoom and right. this thing. Jim's, saying something. Jim's trying to say something. Maybe he's actually. Since we are recording it in Zoom, the only thing that we would have to do for the next time um, is to get a microphone that feeds into the um, video tablet that I have there so that they can be heard. Um, because there is audio that is done within Zoom, as well as video. So as long as we can, as long as I can get a, a microphone, and I got a couple of weeks to play with play with that, uh, to get a microphone that would go out to the one that is where the public would speak, so that they can be heard, we should have no problem turning off the microphones, um, as long as Lisa's comfortable with that, because she does get an audio from Zoom, because I'll send that to her tomorrow. Um, and I do have some software that I that I got that allows me to crop things out of in and out of that audio feed. I'm working on being able to crop it out of the video feed, but I am easily able to crop it out of the audio feed right now. So um, we should have no problem doing that for the next meeting. We'll try that. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah, I know. It seems to be that we should have one mic and one. Speaker for everything. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it's almost worth going back to doing the meetings without the Zoom. Right. We have cameras here. People can watch the meeting. The meeting's yeah. not right. live. It's a little bit delayed. Right. 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 Uh, I agree. And, but I think when there's a big topic, like right now, we have only three people, three, four, under four people. But well, we did it last time where we did live Facebook and people could. Then, right. That was a little cumbersome too with the delay. It was like a two minute delay. I just don't Unfortunately, that's, that's, you know, you know, know, not everybody. I'm with you. I would love to see it as well. And, and this is uh, something that people are comfortable with. Everybody. So if we can figure out the technical side on our end, I, I think we can. But I would rather do this. I'd rather just go back to Zoom. Right. This is painful. Right. This is really painful and i'm sure the people watching this are like what the heck is going on like they can't hear echoes it's, it's reverb it's coming back out. It's, this it's isn't zoom this isn't zoom it is they're saying all 
Oh, yeah, that was great. Also. Yeah, see, there's an echo going through there now that people are hearing. Mr. Gerald is waving his uh, Okay, it's we're going to delay. It's, it's cutting up so visitors cannot. Yeah. Ready to continue? Yeah. Yep, sorry for the interruption. Right. Okay. So, for the items that we will be voting on tonight, we'll go through them and we will discuss them with the commission. This is the workshop part of our meeting. First thing is we will have minutes from May 14th. Regular meeting, May 14th, executive meeting, May 28th, regular meeting, June 11th, regular meeting, June 25th, regular meeting, and June 9th, regular meeting. The next, we will have an introduction of ordinance 2020. Oh, I gotta, don't I can't, I can't. Turn your volume in. Yeah. Ordinance of adoption 2020-016, and that's establishing our 2020 salaries compensation salary ranges. This is something that we do every year, and it just gives, it, it is every title within the city of Etna and the range of salary beginning to end, starting to end. Um, based uh, for non-union people, the um, commission comes up with it. For union people, of course, they are um, contracted salaries for the negotiated bargaining unit contracts. Anything on that, commissioners? No. Okay. The next we're gonna have um, two public hearings and then adoptions of ordinances. One is 2020-014. The first is about the clothing donation bins. And I, we talked about this last time. I don't know, if Commissioner Landgraf, if you want to uh, add a little color to it, or I think we've discussed it. Yeah, I think just as an update, not an update, but a re recap, I guess. Uh, we've noticed that some of our clothing donation bins have been overflowing. It's unsightly. Um, we're changing the ordinance that we will have some repercussions if that continues. Right. Okay. Commissioner Griebel, you okay with that? Absolutely. All right. The next will be. Um, or uh, public hearing and adoption of 2020-015, and that is the ordinance of the city of Vetner, uh, amending 72-6 beaches. This is uh, allowing barbecue on our beach from June 1st to September 30th. And this was discussed at our last meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Gas only. Gas That's only, right. yes. Okay, then we will have resolutions that we will vote by consent. And the first one is 2020-236. That is uh, the city accepting the annual audit. Thank you, Al, and the finance staff. There were no findings. Am I correct? No Which is a wonderful, that's what we call a clean audit. Right. Yes. Nice job, Al. Thank you. Good news. Thank you. The next <laughs> is 2020-237, and that's a resolution authorizing us to close out an escrow account. I don't think there's any questions on that. Correct. The next is 2020-238, and that is um, a resolution, um, <clears throat> excuse me, increasing the bid threshold. Our governor on July 1st, 2020, increased the uh, bid threshold to 44,000 if you have a qualified purchasing agent, which we do. Actually, we have we have three of them. Yeah, three of them now. So um, that gives us uh, a little more leeway. Are we okay with that? Yes. Okay. The next is 2020-239, and that is uh, final uh, authorizing the final work change order for the sanitary sewer and water and drainage improvements on Kinsley Drive, Wellington Avenue, and Lafayette Avenue. Just a little bit on that. Uh, change orders back and forth. Some things we had to add, some things we had to take away. Overall result in just under a $15,000 reduction in the overall contract. Um, that overall project's not quite finished. Coming back in the fall, we didn't want to have the street dug up in the summertime. So we will be back in the fall to finish that project up. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Next is resolution 2020 240, and that's a resolution authorizing us to close out another escrow account. We'll go with that. Yes, that one is an increase. <laughs> <laughs> the next is um, 2020. 241, and that is authorizing a non union part time uh, employee in our rec department for the summer. It's a salary adjustment of a dollar an hour, correct, Marie? Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything on that? Minimum wage. All right, the next is 2020 242, and that's authorizing approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant agreement with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the local aid infrastructure application. And did I write over there? So that one is uh, something. It's a continuation of the safe pedestrian and bikeway 
And we're talking about road diets too. Right? Yeah, we talked about road diets, and, and Long Fork did it a few years ago. Margate is looking at it, and this will get a grant for us and Margate to study whether that's something that we would consider here, or we should consider here okay. in the city of Bend. That's on Atlantic Avenue. Yes, that's what I wrote. I couldn't understand my writing. Okay, you go with that, Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Next is 2020-243, and this is a, author, this, a resolution authorizing the city for after hours left for emergency response team. We go with that? Yep. Yes. Okay, the next is 2020-244, and that is the city accepting the resignation of Malika Lynn Allen. We go with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. The next is 2020-245, and that is authorizing um, the city for the um, the kiosks is going up in our municipal lot, parking meters, and the, the timing. Is it's, it's eight to eight like the rest of our meters? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because they were on meters, we had, because now kiosks. Yes, yeah, right. Okay. And then eight to six in a, starting October 1. Yeah, after October 1st, they could, it goes down to 8 p.m. to 6 p.m. 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, but now it's eight to eight, right? Yep. Okay. okay. And we'll go with that, Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Um, the next is 2020. 246, and that is a, a, uh, the city authorizing the final work change order for the board work, board, board work choice and pile repairs. There were two more piles that needed to be done, and it was an additional $4,600. Am I correct? That's correct. The um, Some of the piling underneath our boardwalk are starting to show their age. We installed pile caps, concrete caps on top of those to repair that. Next is 2020-247, and this is... Uh, resolution authorizing the city to, um, what do we have here? Oh, this is um, hiring a temporary medical uh, EMT for the city of Ventnor. Is this for the beach? Yes. Yes, yes right. One guy got called up into the military. All right, so we replace, replace. backfilling. Yep. Great. The next right. is sorry. resolution. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> the next is resolution 2020 248. It's a resolution it authorizing right, temporary right, employment, right, employment, and this is the, um, the, uh, the young lady that we hired. Hire. Am I correct? Am I correct? Uh, it's a gentleman. And, um, Christina? Christina's it's Christian. Christian. It's a man. It's spelled wrong. Yeah. It's spelled wrong. Okay. Um, one day a week for the courts. This is the one day a week for the courts. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And we should have another one that'll be two times a month for the courts. Yes, because we are. She just got back to me today, so that'll be the next meeting. And the reason we're doing this, um, these people, one day a week, is because the court has lost people through retirement, and um, by state mandate, we have to have a certain staffing level in there. So we need to get some help right now until other things are that we're working on. Okay, uh, commissioners, do you want to add the uh, surf camp as a? Um, by consent, by consent resolution or separate? Um, I think we should do that separate. Okay, yeah. then I'll leave that out. Okay, so they're the so ones. What's that number? That is 250. Okay, so they're the ones that we will vote on by consent. Then we will vote on the resolution for um, the vetner to um, Proving an agreement and a contract with the surf school camp and the uh, ocean safety instruction camp concession. And that would be resolution 2020-250. We will vote on that separately, not by not with the consent resolutions. Okay? Then we will have approval of payrolls and bills. Do we have any discussion items? I'll save it for my okay. commissioner comments. Tim? Same. We're good? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'll open it to the public. This is the public portion where anyone from the public can speak on anything that we are going to vote on in our regular meeting. This is only the time people can ask, comment, whatever, on things that we are going to vote on. Do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. It is now open to the public. Jim, I'm going to ask the public in here right now first, if you don't mind. Is there anybody here in, in the chambers that would like to ask any questions or have any comments on the things that we discussed thus far? Okay. I have no one in the courtroom that wants to discuss anything, so you can see if there's anybody out there in Zoom. Is there anybody in Zoom um, that would like to speak on any of the items? Um, Sandra, did you have a question? Uh, 
Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we yeah. can. Okay, I just would like some clarification about the barbecuing on the beach. Is that just on the holidays? No, that is from, we, that is from June 1st to September 30th. Uh, well, I'd like to speak against that. I go to the beach for fresh air, uh, and uh, people are going to be barbecuing all the time. The odors are going to just be horrible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, hello, can you hear me? Morning. Yes. Hi, I wanted to um, support uh, Sandra's uh, idea. I thought it was only on the holidays. I think you're gonna get seagulls, uh, you know, more seagulls coming and uh, daily barbecuing could be a problem. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else out there, Jim? No, I don't see anybody else. Excuse me? Uh, no. Okay. There are motion to close public portion. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you have a motion to close the workshop portion of the meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Do you have a motion to call to order the regular meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second moved. All in second. favor? Aye. 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 Sound like a broken record. Do so I have approval of minutes for May 14, 2020 regular meeting, May 14, 2020 executive? June 11th, 2020 regular, June 25th, 2020 regular, and June 9th, July 9th, 2020 regular. Do I have a motion to approve this? Does that also include May 28th regular meeting? Because I wasn't there. Gotcha. <laughs> so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Please roll call, please. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Do I have a motion to approve um, May 28th, 2020 regular meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Please roll call, please. Mr. Friedel? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Mr. Holton? Yes. Next on the agenda is the ordinance of production, and that is ordinance 2020-016, and this is the ordinance establishing our South Salary Station and South Salary Range of the year 2020. Make a motion to introduce ordinance 2020-016. Do I have a second? Second motion. Excuse me. Lisa, roll call, please. Mr. Friedel? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Next, we have a public hearing on Ordinance 2020-014, and that's the donation bins. Do I have a motion to open to the public? Motion to open to the public, Ordinance 2020-014. Do I have a second? Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. It is now open for public hearing only on this Ordinance 2020-014. This is in reference to the donation bins. Anyone else? No. Jim, anyone? Anybody on the Zoom meeting have any questions or comments on Ordinance 2020-014? I do not see anyone. Okay. Do I have a motion to close public hearing? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Next is adoption of Ordinance 2020-014. Do I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? Motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-014. Do I have a second? Second motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Mr. Yes. Yes. Next, we have a public hearing on ordinance 2020 015. This is on uh, amending 72 6 speeches, which is the barbering. Do I have a motion to open to the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Anyone here from the public to speak on that? I don't see anyone in the courtroom. Um, Jim, so if anybody else is out there. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, it's been very confusing to follow what you're voting on as you're going through the items. What currently are you asking for public opinion on? Or in 2020-015, which is amending 72-6 beaches, which is the barbecue. Oh, the barbecue one now? Yeah, see, at the beginning, when we start our meeting, we have a workshop. That's when we go into detail on what we're discussing. Now, this is um, for, this is our regular meeting where we actually vote. Okay. My only uh, comment is, since it's going to impact so many people, I would think that uh, this needs to be publicized and maybe voted on on a referendum. A I think people. I think people are going to be very upset when this starts to happen. And um, 
you know, it's, I mean, I don't want to sound like a complainer or somebody that's, you know, puts ideas just down, but no, I don't, I don't think people are going to like this. Well, no, you're not complaining. You're voicing your, your opinion and we, and we welcome that, but this is a, this is not something that we don't want a referendum. This is something that the commission, we were voted in office to, to deal with ordinances. It was everything that we meet on is advertised. Our agendas are on the website and everything, just as I said at the beginning of the meeting, that we do everything in accordance with the law. Everything's out there. Um, people, resources are there. They can look at it. Now they have a meeting. Um, we discussed this two weeks ago at a meeting when we introduced the ordinance. Now tonight we have the public hearing and then the adoption. So there's 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 a lot of opportunity out there, and uh, I respect your concern and opinion, but uh, I don't really see people barbecue seven days a week. Uh, do I see every person would be barbecue. I really don't see that. I don't know. I could be very wrong, but this is something that we thought about, and I think so much taken away from people um, since February that we need to be able to, we need to balance, we need to balance people to enjoy life a little bit. And the beach is wide open, open space. Uh, so this is something that we thought long and hard on and we feel that it is, is in best interest for the majority of our residents. So I thank you. Anyone else here have anything to say? Hello, can you yes. hear me? Hi, hi. Um, I just was wondering, does that mean they could barbecue all day long? They can barbecue on the beach from 10 to 6, I think. Am I correct? When the beaches are protected by lifeguards. I would, yeah, I, I would just think it would be 4 to 6. You know, yeah, this is only gas grills. Um, so it's, pretty, it's pretty actually inconvenient to bring gas grill to the beach. It's a bit of a process. So it's something that usually happens when they're and there's also uh, when there's a larger groups and it doesn't happen. It's not like barbecue grills. It's not the cold. It's not right. Hang on. Um, no, so it's not. It's not barbecue know. grills with coals and open right. flame. These are I mean, gas I grills, which can that. be somewhat cumbersome to bring to the beach. They're not very. It's not done very often. It's usually done right. on the weekends. And it's, right. And from I, my I, experience, I understand it's the thing sporadically at, at best. Right. So we will monitor it with the beach patrol and the police department. Right, and if we see that it's become a nuisance or there's issues, then we will revisit it. And it, yeah, but again, it's not dragging a small barbecue charcoal grill. It's having a gas grill that can control the flame and not leave open flame. Right, okay. Anyone else out there, Jim? Okay, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, the next is the adoption of ordinance 2020-015, amending 72-6. Do I have a motion to adopt the ordinance? Motion to adopt ordinance 2020-15. I have a couple comments just on it from, sure. from my standpoint. So we didn't just come up with this idea on our own. We were approached by people. There are people who come here during the week, go to the beach, and want to be able to enjoy a barbecue when it's not a holiday weekend. Because we've always allowed them on holidays. We opened up, I think, last year. It was an extra holiday, I think. But, um, so every weekend, I think, last year, right? Every now, weekend. Every yeah. weekend. So yeah. this will allow people who come down during the week to enjoy the barbecue on the beach. And Commissioner Cream was right. I mean, they have small gas grills that people bring down, but it is an effort to make. So it's not something you can't just bring a little hibachi down and light up the coals. It, it's, it's a process. And like the mayor said, I don't see this happening every day. We want to have the opportunity for people to enjoy the outdoors um, and grill on our beach. So that's especially if they're down for a week, the renting and that sort of thing. Yep. It's not like you said. It's, we did have it every weekend last year, and there were no issues. There were right. no issues, and also this year, um, with with outdoor dining with limited space for people to go somewhere, you know, it, it gives them a little more extra convenience. Agreed. To be able to have something on the beach. Okay, so. Um, so I make a motion to introduce. Thank you. To adopt, right? To adopt, sorry. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Please, a roll call, please. Commissioner Cleveland? Yes. Commissioner Mayhem? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Next, we will adopt resolution by consent 2020-236 to 2020-248. Do I have a motion to adopt these resolutions? Motion to adopt resolutions 2020-236 to 248. 
Second motion. Please roll call, please. Mr. Fiegel? Yes. Mr. Andrea? Yes. Yes. Next, we have a separate resolution in, excuse me, 2020-250, and that is the resolution approving an agreement contract for the surf school camp and ocean safety instruction camp concession. Do I have a motion to... <laughs> okay. I have a motion to adopt the resolution. So Mayor? with with conditions. Oh, yes, with conditions of work workman compensation approved by the city prior to any activity. Correct um, him? But by the city and its insurance advisor, yes. By the city and the insurance advisor. Okay. Right? I will make that motion. You make the motion. By the staff. I'll second. Lisa, roll call, please. Mr. Friegel? Yes. Mr. Lambria? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Okay, next we have approval of bills and payrolls. Our CFO, Al, will you please give us the amount of bills and payrolls? Yes, uh, the amount for the payroll was 660301 And the amount of the bill list this period is $2,151,289.57. Thank you. Do I have a uh, motion to approve bills and payments stated by our CFO? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Please vote <coughs> roll call, please. Mr. Kriegel? Yes. Mr. Landria? Yes. Mayor Holford? Yes. Next, we have uh, well, we have announcements for commissioner's comments and reports. If you can find them lately, so Commissioner Landria? Sure. Uh, where's my notes? Where's my notes? Here we go. A couple of things. Um, if you were in Snake Alley today, you weren't in Snake Alley because we had a, a sewer. <laughs> we had a double header today, so we had um, we had a sewer line break that we saw earlier in the week. Uh, we brought in our team as well as one of our utility contractors in to repair that. Uh, in doing so, they found a water service leak down near the old Derby Boathouse down Zeps um, that was dumping water also into that same sewer line. Dirty ball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I call it the Dirty Boathouse or Dirty yeah. Hall, right? Um, so we will come back and we, we repaired that leak, but we have to repair some, make some other repairs in that line. Uh, we'll be back there tomorrow. So there will be additional delays and detours okay. through Winchester Avenue Derby, which is locally known as Snake Alley. Snake, yes. Uh, okay. Not named after Snake, John no, Connor, I, I, but <laughs> because of the shape of the road. Um, the just to follow the same utility stuff, water usage. So we all know we've been more crowded since March. That was verified in June. So our June water usage is usually about 40 million gallons a month, 50 million mm. gallons per month. So we're up 10 million gallons in that one month. So there's a lot of people on the island. Yes. So we have plenty of water, doing great. Our towers are full. Pumps are working great. Wells are doing good. We've rebuilt two of them. So we're, yeah, um, yeah. What did I even say? Right? <laughs> it's not. It's not Friday yet. So, exactly. Um, I was talking with Ed Stinson uh, at our meeting on on Tuesday morning. Right? He mm -hmm. said his first like eight weeks here, mm -hmm. every Friday or every holiday, yes. something broke. Every something you're broke. You're right. And it was. Oh, you're right. It's usually trial, a holiday. trial by fire. Yeah, it's usually a holiday. Um, it is. And then just a comment, and you brought it up earlier, Mayor, outdoor dining. You know, we've done a lot of things to help our restaurants in the, in the community, in the city, with closing some streets, allowing some uh, use of the parking areas in front of their restaurants, using the sidewalks to a greater extent than they were in the past. Um, we've, we've done that, and we really need to, to, to reach out to these restaurants. I'm doing that tonight, I'm going to do that personally again. To, to reach out to them. They really have to work back with us a little bit. Um, they're, they're taking up a little too much space on the sidewalks. Um, they have to make sure they're social distancing with those tables. Um, so I'm gonna reach out to them again and, and ask them to kind of work with us. We've, we've had some pushback with allowing pedestrians to get through these areas. You know, we've, we've kept uh, Chief Biagi and Captain Fussner and his team pretty busy. Uh, and they've done great. It's just a matter of we need to now ask them to work back with us a little bit, meaning the restaurants. They comply with the executive order of a governor. Right. The CDCs and, and make, you know, make, you know, making sure everybody's wearing a mask that works there and that the tables are far enough apart. Yes. Uh, and crowd control and things of that nature. So, <laughs> and as we said this, this is a fluid process. Right. It's a learning curve for all of us, including the restaurants. Yes. Um, 
you know, and, and they're getting it, they're getting it slowly, but I, I would ask them and I would reach out to the ones that are, that are using the sidewalks and, and, and these spaces to be a little bit more concerning or concerned with pedestrians and neighbors with noise and things of that nature. You know, we've seen some, some great uh, entertainment happening on, on some of our streets with, with singing and, and you know, acoustic guitars and things. That's great. We've got to keep it to a, a minimum so we're not damaging the, the environment of our neighbors in that area. So right. we'll reach out to those. Uh, we still want to keep the image of Vetner. We do. We do. And, and right now, you know, it's, it's pretty good. We're, we're one of the, 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 That's a good point. the, the leaders in, in allowing a lot of this to happen. Right. And we knew there was going to be some pushback. I also asked on the other side of that, our residents that live in that area, be a little bit, you know, you're gonna to have to bear with it a little bit. We apologize for that. We, if we lose these businesses during this time, it's gonna be really difficult to get them back. We've, we've done a lot in the last five years to get these businesses here, these restaurants here. You know, we're starting to be known as a little bit of a restaurant community and that's great. We have to help them. They've got to help us back a little bit now. But we have to be a little more, you know, we understand it's an inconvenience for residents of those areas, but we really need to, to try and work with these businesses and, and, and get them to work back with us. But uh, It's all about a balance. It is. And, balance. and right now, it's, it's a difficult balance. It is. It is. These guys are hurting. Yes. And we, we, want to, we want to make sure they stay open. Yeah. Because once the fall comes, if there's no indoor dining, that's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be very difficult. It's, it's so. going to be difficult. So, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Friedman? Yeah. I will actually, in reverse order, um, I will actually, in reverse order, talk about the three things that he brought up uh, street dining. Uh, from a public safety standpoint, um, uniform enforcement is important to us. Like you had mentioned there, the, the governor's orders requires uh, six feet apart. It requires uh, tables. It requires uh, limiting the tables to eight, and it requires all the restaurant employees to wear masks. Now, those are non-negotiable requirements. That I think we all, we all they are not. Um, and again, yeah, you also you mentioned, mentioned the image amendment. So going forward, because this COVID response to our outdoor dining has kind of been a um, thrust upon us um, after this summer is over. I'd like to propose that a uh, prototype of a parklet that has more of an image of Ventnor in mind, something that would incorporate the finishes that we see in Ventnor and the boardwalk as the decking, the railings that we see on the boardwalk as the railings that could be prototyped by our public works department. I could, I'm already working on some of the designs and that it could be used off county roads as a way to sort of showcase them and incorporate the restaurants to potentially pay for those to be built. And then we could have somehow work out a, an arrangement that we could incorporate this. I think your comment about Bender being a restaurant community, it would enhance that. It would be, people would come and see the, a brand in Ventnor that they have a boardwalk, that they have parklets that, that evoke the design of the boardwalk and it, it could be a benefit. So I'd like to work on that. Sounds good. Um, you mentioned water. Uh, not only is our call, uh, not our water usage up, but our call volume is way up. It's probably in the same proportion. Yep. So that's something that we should all be aware of, especially since the COVID's relaxing a little bit. Police, fire, everything has in increased. And um, and then to that effect, Snake Alley. We're working on with the residents there, new crosswalks and uh, blinking lights on the. <coughs> A blinking flashlight, flashing spot. So I was, in, I was in Brigantine last night for a planning board meeting over there. I went driving around to look at one of the sites, and I'll have to get a picture of it for you. It's actually a stop sign that has a solar ray on top of it. Right. It red LED right around it, and it yeah. flashes. Yeah, that's what we're looking at doing there, a larger version of that, because that is, we have uh, approximately 100 stops since the neighborhood um, reached out to us and approximately 50 tickets and let wow. about a month on that corner. So rightfully so, the neighborhood spoke up and we took action that night. There were stops happening um, yeah. after they came out and asked us. Great. So- um, Great that we took action. Yeah. It's not great that people got stopped. Yeah. Well, they, you know, again, it's, that alone. The, this, the pendulum swings both ways. Yeah. Again, with the street dining, we all have to kind of find the middle. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, uh, two more items. Station one is uh, open and operating. It has been. 
communications are up and running there. We are on final punch list items there that are more cosmetic. However, I would suggest that we wait till the dedication until the final electronic sign is up, which is going to be later, and that the signage on the building itself is up so that we're not, you know, that it's done, done. Right. And that'll help us work through the... You're uh, talking about station two, right? Station two, I'm sorry, station two. I agree. So you agree. Yes. So we'll just sit tight on that until it's... And then I have one last thing. I just want to thank, um, if I can share my screen with... Um, thanks, thanks, Jim. Um, is that all right? Can you let me uh, share screen for a second, Jim? Those disabled participant to. screen sharing. Okay, <laughs> there we go. I see Lance's face one day. I see Maria's coffin face. Real Sorry, I threw that to Jim. You there? Can you hear me? Yeah, you should be able to do it. He's muted. Hold on. Oh, no, he's muted. That's okay. There you go. Now you should be able to do it. All right. All right. So uh, one last thing that I want to comment on is um, this signage. So back a month ago, or no, excuse me, feels like uh, it's probably a year ago. Um, <laughs> it was probably more than a year ago. Um, uh, we uh, we were all uh, kind of disappointed in the visual noise, and I guess me maybe more. Uh, <laughs> on the boardwalk. Um, so I worked with uh, Public Works and a local uh, graphic designer, um, <coughs> Lori Coliani, um, to uh, clean up the visual noise on the boardwalk. So I sent this brief saying that we have, we have a number of signs on the boardwalk that include things that are just not happening anymore. Town watches, mixed messages, ball walking hours that are no longer valid uh, or, or confusing. We have signs on the, on the entrance ramps that are bent over. So all, so the, 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 what you're gonna see is all these red marked X signs are going out, they're leaving, and we replace them with what I think is an attractive design. And I think um, we can all agree is um, a group of signage that is, here, let me put this one up. So um, it's a group of signs, hang on, one second, that has, here we go, this. So um, there's, a, there's two signs. Uh, one is a 24 by 24 that has, um, uh, that, has a, a, uh, that has information that is always consistent throughout the year. And then there are two 24 by 36 signs. One right now that's up says lifeguards on duty, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., June 1st to Labor Day, beach badges required, and the bicycle hours. To avoid some of the redundancy and the confusion, we have a second sign that will be, that will be replaced after um, Labor Day. It says swimming prohibited because lifeguards are off duty. And it changes the sign. It changes the times of the bicycle. It changes um, the dogs that are permitted ocean edge, and, and but the leashes are on at all times. So that's what you're going to see, uh, and that's what you can see now is these blue signs in a group. The 24 by 24 will always be there, and seasonally this 24 by 36 will be changed out. So I think we did a little bit to beautify and simplify the world, and everything, and we changed kept the color the same. So that that's. Um, I think, I think a victory in terms of less visual, less visual noise. Very clean. Yep. Tim, I, I, they look great. They do. Uh, they really, your the lead on this was phenomenal. And, and it took a while, but we got it right. It took a while. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. It takes take a while. We're That's the right. real government. We, don't, we have to take a while. If we That's don't, right. then people look at us. Fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I, they look great. We've gotten great comments on them. Good. I did find out why the, the bolts were where they are. Did, did Ed call you? No. Oh. Those were pre-drilled holes. Right. Because if they would have drilled after they put the laminate on, they would have tore it. Right. So they had to be there. All right. So yeah. That was only one complaint. I know. They went through the holes <laughs> yeah, of the, where the words are, but we, we sorted that out. But all in all, I think it's a great improvement. I think that visually, you, you'll, uh, we, we chose the same blue as the street sign, so I'd like to keep all the signs that same blue because I think- No green, right? No green. But it's something that people see, and I think- I like them. You don't notice. You don't know all the you know you don't notice all the different sides. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. They look beautiful. Anything else?
Um, next, we have public comment. This is for anyone that would like to speak on anything. Uh, so, motion to open public comment portion. Motion to open public. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, this is open to the public. Do anybody out there that would like to say anything? Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi. This is Sue Brother. Hold on. Okay, let's okay. One, one at a time. Okay. Sandra, Sandra was up first. Okay. Thank Sandra. you. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, uh, in listening, I learned the answer to one of my questions, which was, were the rules regarding dogs on the beach changed recently? Because I see dogs on the beach now. And uh, of course, they're not always at the water's edge and they're not always on a leash. And um, I was just wondering uh, two things about dogs. How are we enforcing that? Uh, besides calling the police on people like sm for smokers, I mean, how, how is that getting enforced? Because people, from my, from my view, a lot of people feel as though rules don't apply to them. It only applies to other people. Uh, so we, that was one question I had. And wow. how do you, how, so how does that get enforced? And uh, are dogs permitted on the boardwalk? Because I see people wow. walking their dogs on the boardwalk. Dogs are, never, dogs are never allowed on the boardwalk. They're allowed on the beach right now summertime between seven and nine they're supposed to be at the, the water line they're supposed mm -hmm. to be on a leash um we do have our police on the boardwalk uh to look at things like this and unfortunately you're, you're probably not going to like my answer but i'm going to be very honest with you we do not have a police department of hundreds of officers we have um, staffing for the city and you know, besides the beach and the boardwalk and dogs not being out there, people smoking a cigarette on the boardwalk. Uh, and now, right now, with COVID, I am constantly uh, in human communications where residents want me to do something because people are not wearing a mask on the boardwalk. Um, unfortunately, Dan, we the cannot control human behavior, nor can we control the fact that people just want to by the law. We wish we could be everywhere at all times, but we cannot. For us to be everywhere at all times and to increase staffing, to have enforced police officers on the beach and boardwalk for the people that bring their dogs, they shouldn't bring their dogs, or they don't pick up after their dogs, or they smoke, or they do not wear a mask or large groups on the boardwalk, we would have to um, increase our police department triple, that's triple, which would increase the tax base probably by, what out, 15, 20 cents? At least. At least. You would see a huge um, tax increase. So as I said, I apologize because you're not gonna like what I had to say, but I'm being very honest, it all comes down to dollars. For us to be able to, enforce everything that I just mentioned, we would need a much larger police department that we have right now. And that would give us a much larger budget and that will give you a much larger tax bill. Uh, as I said earlier in with another topic, it's all about the balance. So I really wish people would follow the rules. The rules do apply to everyone. Unfortunately, it's human behavior and I don't have the power to fix that or control it or does anybody in the commission. So I, I'm sorry, but th that's, that's the truth. Well, it's kind of hard for me to explain to my little ones why they see dogs on the boardwalk when they know that they're not permitted on the boardwalk. But right. I, what I wanted to uh, suggest uh, for consideration is do what other towns are doing and see if we could get a special specials officers we have uh, or we, we have special officers yes, yes we well, do well i know that there's a lot of kids a lot of young men and women who uh want to have careers in law enforcement and maybe we could get some sort of volunteer 
uh, patrol going so that, you know, with radios, and then if they see a problem, they can call an officer to come. Yeah. It's, very, it's very hard to put this responsibility on the citizen to speak up and, and tell people about the rules and what they should that they shouldn't smoke or please don't smoke or, you know, because in today's political climate, some people out there are really nuts. And, yeah. you know, they yes. could- they Commissioner, could, Kriebel, Commissioner Kriebel, who oversees public safety, he would like to respond um, and give you a little insight too. Go ahead, Commissioner Kriebel. Thanks, uh, Ms. Arwitz. So, um, you get, I think, uh, first of all, you're, you're absolutely right. You should not engage in ask, telling people that um, they're doing something wrong because in this environment they could react unpleasantly and it could be a worse problem. But as Mayor said, we do have, um, we have a police force that's exactly the right size for Ventnor and we do respond to these types of calls. So the first thing you should do is call the non-emergency line at the city hall. And we do have specials. We do have patrols on the boardwalk and the beach that can address these types of things when it's appropriate and their, their needs as a law enforcement are not required in other ways. You know, the, the, she's, and the mayor's 100% right. Uh, Ventnor may seem like a sleepy little town, but we have hundreds of calls. Um, we have calls every hour. We have dozens of calls every hour. Um, so, but we, and the specials that we do have uh, are limited this year because the, um, the Academy. academies were not open until very late. And you may be surprised there aren't as many qualified individuals that are interested in being in law enforcement. And a lot of them get picked up by the larger cities quickly that have more, um, more resources like Wildwood to pay for those. It's in Atlantic City. CRDA. The CRDA pays for. So it does in a lot of ways come down to money. We do not want to, I, I can think I can speak for the chief. We do not want to enlist the public in a, in a neighborhood watch on this type of thing. We would rather you contact, put us, put, put, I, I know they're not going to like me for saying this, but put them on the speed dial. And I agree with you. I'm a person um, that I think uh, is always frustrated by people not following the rules. But in their defense, the signage on the boardwalk was conflicting. The signage on the boardwalk was hard to read. The and uh, but and the people that I've confronted as a, pub, a public safety officer uh, would say that they uh, were unaware. They're from out of town. Um, that's not always true. Uh, and I can tell you there are a number of people that have gotten tickets because they were repeat offenders walking their dogs on the boardwalk. Um, so we are, as a city, one of the most lenient in terms of allowing dogs on our beach. You, you are not allowed in Marty and uh, and the door season, season whatsoever, long for in the entire year whatsoever. I don't know what Atlantic City's rules are. Winter. In the winter. So we are um, now, um, we don't, don't feel like, like this, this is the type of thing that, that uh, we, have we have a tremendous amount of dollars, dollars and, and it's a small, we feel it's a, it's a small price to, have <laughs> to give them a little bit of um, uh, time for our animals. So, well, um, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the clarification. Uh, I'd just like to go on record that I'm vehemently against having dogs walk on the beach, especially when there are still people on the beach and kids and uh, and the uh, waste of the dog. I mean, I just can't believe that we allow it. But, uh, but the main thing is that um, our police, our police should not be responding to dog walk, you know, complaints about dog walkers and, uh, and, and smokers and people who violate the rules. I, our I police should be reserved, our, our police should be reserved to maintain that our community is safe. I mean, there's just so much, so many awful things that are happening out there and they should be vigilant in, in, uh, you know, patrolling the streets to make exactly. sure that we don't have uh, crime. Right. right. We but agree. So that, is the only, that is the only but, venue of enforcement. Yeah, but community policing is a part of what they do as well. Exactly. So exactly. it's again, it's not, it's not black, it's not one way or the other. They, they can, they can keep 
responding and be efficient, but also respond to things that aren't as Can, I, can I key in, in here a little bit? You get, sure. ask well, let's wait till Sandra's, if Sandra's done first. Yeah. Sandra, are you done? Uh, well, um, when, when did the rules about the dogs on the beach change? They didn't change. They did not. They haven't changed. been that way. It, it, the rules on the beach for the dogs being able to be on the beach after the beaches are closed at seven o'clock until nine o'clock at night. Right. At so night, the wait, the, the fact that they have to pick up after themselves, it, they still have to do that, and it's after people leave off the beach. They're not allowed to have their dogs on the beach during beach open time. All right. Well, then, then what you said about the signs must have been true because from the signs, I always thought. No dogs on the boardwalk at any time, and no dogs on the beach between May and Labor Day. Period. No, that's and, there, and you're right. There is a sign that says that incorrectly, and now we hope that this will clear it up. Sandra, can you please state your address because when when anyone speaks, you're. I know it's a little. We're losing a little bit with you, but we, before you, anyone speaks, they have to state their name and their address. Uh, Fifteen South Washington. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, can I? Can I? Okay. Wait, wait a minute, Sandra. You all done? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, you, Sandra. Stay safe. Okay, Marlene. Okay, whoever else is going to speak, please state your name and your address before yes, you speak, so we have a yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Marlene May, and my address is 25 South Oakland, Ventnor City. Thank you. I think you guys are great, and I saw the signs, and I think they're very helpful. Uh, I was very happy to see those new signs. They were clear and. That's one thing I've been worrying about for a while. I also uh, feel similar to Sandra regarding the dogs. And I do remember, because I've been coming to Ventnor since 50. We had a house here on Dorset Avenue for a while. Do you remember a time that dogs were not allowed on the beach uh, in the summertime, in season? I think there was, I wasn't involved in the community at, uh, community meetings at that time, but I do remember my landlord on when I lived on 15 South Richards, she was involved. And I do remember there was a vote about the dogs being allowed on the beach. Now, I don't really have, a, I love dogs. I don't own a dog, but I, I think dogs are great. And most of the owners that I have seen have been compliant, but not all. And I did have a very unpleasant, uh, re, um, what do you call it, encounter with a dog. Um, I. I I just remember calling City Hall and saying, you know, what do I do when something like this happens? And they said, you call the police. Right. So I was feeling the same way as Sandra was feeling like, man, am I, and this woman who I had, his dog I had the encounter with was um, a neighbor. And I felt like, am I really going to call the police on a neighbor? It was very uncomfortable. So I, I don't know. It's like, I think you guys do a great job with the, uh, uh, beach checkers for the beach tags. Thank you. There's a little different because of COVID and all that, but normally, you know, I've had beach checkers come to me and say, can I see your badge? And I'll show them. That has worked so well. I know the lifeguards are not responsible for like smokers or dogs, but, but I just wonder in the future, not maybe not this year, but in the future thinking about, is there a way that you could have young people, like Sandra said, be just walked over to the people. I, I saw a dog on the beach all day, a couple, yesterday I went to the beach. The dog was all day with them under the tent. Not causing trouble. Well, sir, not to interrupt you, Marlene. Yeah, go ahead, sweetie. I'm sorry. Sometimes people have a service dog under federal law. They can mm -hmm. be anywhere and everywhere. And, um, for, for you and like, Sandra, mm -hmm. I mean, Honestly, my position as uh, as a mother, as a mayor, I and I'm sure the commissioners, as uh, commissioners and fathers, I would not have young people interact with people that are violating an ordinance or the gut, like the governor's executive order. I mean, I think Sandra said she doesn't feel that she doesn't want to say something to someone about smoking or, or whatever because of the political climate and what and how people can react well as long as i'm in office and i think my commissioners would agree with me having young people try to enforce no smoking no dogs 
wear a mask, social distance is not something that I would even think of because honestly, our speech checkers are great, but if you only knew the kind of verbal abuse that they ha deal with every summer, mm -hmm. it would basically blow your mind. So <laughs> I would not, as long as I am in office, I would not ever have a young people to try to enforce things that, as Commissioner uh, Creepo said, are is part of the police. Um, so, you know, she did, uh, Sandra didn't want to deal with, you know, does it, I know like, you don't feel comfortable to say something to someone, you don't know how someone's going to react. And I, and I agree with you. We, we are living in a world that's a little bit upside down right now. But with that, uh, there's no way that I would put young people in a position to try to enforce things. I just want. Yeah. All right. Got, I Anybody else in the public? Richard, I, yeah. I have someone here in the in the chambers, Jim. Okay. Okay. okay let Richard's been waiting. State your name and address as you know. Good evening, Richard Gover, 26 North Coast Avenue, Ventor. First of all, I want to thank the commissioners and all your staff for the jobs you've been doing, especially since it's very difficult time. Thank I remember you. Remember asking all three of you if you are elected in this time, will you seek more than two of terms? And I can see that it can be a thankless job many times. So you, I've been out of the country during this up until about four weeks ago and been following some of the news and things that are going on, and you've all been beat up on time. So, on behalf of the residents, I do appreciate what you've been doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I had a couple of issues. One of them, many of them are old time for me. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak to Chief Yashi uh, yesterday by phone. Uh, I have probably for the last 15 or 20 years suggested that we line the intersections on Bentner Avenue with legal crosswalks. But right now, Margate has them, Longport has them, we have them on Atlantic Avenue. We don't have them on Bentner Avenue. They're only at the red lights. And unfortunately, as you well know, there's a crazy law in this state that says you have to yield <laughs> to a person in the crosswalk. And unfortunately, then there are people that are not in the crosswalks they don't exist. And I've seen very close situations. I've heard rumors, I don't know if this is true, but someone has told me that maybe Margate may be closing down Atlantic Avenue, possibly. I've heard something to their tune of where Chief Piaggio told me about it. That it may be going one lane each way and having a passing lane. That's called uh, a, yeah, a road diet. Yes, yes. So that's what's called a road diet. Slowing down, which yeah. we all like to do. Good. Um, the pedestrian and bicycle safety report study that was done gosh, five, four, almost five years ago now. That was one of the recommendations, but it did not go as far as doing a traffic study to see if that would be the best thing to do for Margate and Bender and even Lane City on Atlantic Avenue. So the grant that we just agreed to apply for tonight. Uh, is applying for funds to do just that type of study. We look and see if that's something that we, it's a, I believe it's a joint study between Margate and Bentner, uh, that we would look at something like that. Uh, and what that would be is we take the four lanes, four travel lanes, and we take that down to one lane in each direction with a set of turning lanes. It also creates what's called a pedestrian respite. So if you're crossing the street at a non traffic control intersection in a crosswalk, you have a spot to stop, but you're not in the middle of traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so that would help with pedestrian safety. Um, we did take the almost not even almost the required step when we put the white lanes in to reduce the speed to 25 miles an hour on Atlantic. We had some discussions at our last meeting, I think Chief got to talk about it a little bit. It's worked somewhat. We still get the people that are doing 50, but it did for the most part those those radar signs to tell you how fast you're going. Mm -hmm actually keep track of that. We get a report and it's wirelessly sent into PD that tells us how many cars are doing what speed. It doesn't tell who was doing it, but it tells us how many. And it's worked. It, it slowed people down for the most part. Um, to your first point on Vetner Avenue with, with the crosswalks, we had applied for a public safety grant with DOT two years ago. We did not get that funding. We applied again this year. We hope to get that funding to be able to put you know, similar crosswalks on Bentner Avenue uh, that we have on land. I will say from Dorset to Margate on Bentner Avenue, that's the county uh, right away. It's their responsibility to do that. 
Um, they are in the final design stages of totally new uh, traffic control systems there, with traffic lights and things of that nature. And that will also include crosswalks uh, from Dorset towards Marion. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that position because anybody that walks across Atlantic Avenue coming from the beach and does not pay, I, I would never ever step along that road until I see red lights down there because one lane may stop for you. But then there are up another lane that doesn't see you. So when I spoke to Chief Bianchi about it, so that in that middle of that happens, their concerns and my concerns are that that route will wind up also getting heavier traffic if the two lanes are eliminated on Atlantic Avenue. And Chief Bianchi, if you speak to him, he will confirm that he and a couple of the officers have spoken about. So just trying to at least put on the table tonight what you tried to get the grant for a couple of years ago. Maybe if that doesn't happen, maybe it's a public works project you could do a couple of summer or whatever it may be. So would we do it if it's painting? Yes. It won't last very long we can the intersection that Commissioner Krieger was talking about, Derby and Winchester, is a prime example. It's just it's spray paint. When we do a project that we bid out, we have Zone Striker and another company like that come in and they actually do uh, thermal stripes. Yeah. So it's actually adhered to the street and it's reflected. It's a lot safer, and that's what you want to do. It's also, well, I agree. But at least it's on the table. It is. I it think is. it's, I, I've honestly, in all honesty, Lance been suggesting this for about 20 years. I've heard it for the last five. So, 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 so <laughs> then you have the other, uh, one thing I would like to She's on the table. I think you're 100% right. The, the, the notion of the road by it reduces the number of potential crashes by something like five different scenarios that are no longer even possible or likely when people follow the road by the, the right hand turn lanes that are stopped. Well, there's a number of different things that makes a lot of sense. And, and it's right, it could potentially put people on other streets once they get used to it. It's proven that the road diet actually keeps traffic flowing oh, faster. It's a perception that people have that they're not going to be able to pass somebody. It's human nature that you have to uh, come back. But you're 100% right. Glad to hear that. Uh, one other comment I would like to make uh, the board aware I think Pam Warren, our code enforcement officer, does an absolutely fantastic job for the city. And over the years, many of our North Beach residents have been instructed to call me because people are afraid to call on a neighbor because somebody could conceivably say, well, your next door neighbor complained about this. So they call me and then I call Pam. And I'm gonna tell you something, that woman is on it like fire. She is. Like, she is. Next issue I have something that I've spoken about for many, many years and I'd love to throw on the table for maybe for you to consider for future time. Uh, I've been back from overseas for not at nine days on the beach. I did hear somebody comment about the beach batch thing from you know, walkers. And in those nine weeks, nine days that I spent on the beach, I saw one time a beach batch person that came up and asked me. Uh, she was a, not a real young lady, but a young woman, and she did a great job. And I would love to suggest maybe for you to think about for 2021. I know you have a little bonus that you have, I believe whoever does the best or something like that, but I would love to throw on the table the thought of a $1 commission to anybody as they sell those speech badges at $1 out of the 15 will make more money than we've ever had. I heard the gentleman on your last week's meeting saying you want to do each block, and you did that a summer ago or so, or we had a couple blocks or whatever. And then the people would walk down and say, whoops, there's somebody there, and they'd walk over a street to walk down. So just just a thought. I have a feeling that because I've watched young girls in the past, and there's six guys over here, young teenagers over here, and they're intimidated by that. Just like we said, just like we talked about earlier, but I have a feeling that if you gave them a one dollar bonus out of that fifteen dollars, you may do well. Any comments? I'm not comfortable with that for a lot of reasons, but I don't want to take up everybody's time. We can talk later about it. Okay. Um, I, I, I think our beach checkers, from what I've heard this summer, they do a great job. Sometimes people say, I haven't seen a beach checker all summer. They're there and they're on the beach. And um, God bless them all because based on the revenue that we've brought in, COVID and all, they're doing a hell of a job. I've been, I've been checked every Saturday and Sunday up and down there. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, so. They have no idea who we are. They check our badges. Yeah, I understand. You know, I, you know, I'm a staff. Thank few you. I, I understand. I, yes. I, but, I, I appreciate your opinion. But there's, there's other, other things yeah. can come into play when you start doing that. Okay. Not a problem. Next yes. item that I have. Yes. yes. Uh, as you all know, I was opposed to having liquor licenses as a vendor. Uh, you did it the right way. You voted on. We were told over and over and over and over again. It's for restaurants. It's for the restaurants. And I spoke to Chief Biagi because, of course, when things happen, and, I, and I'm here, I'm getting the emails, even from people that don't live in North Beach, and speaking of Santucci's. Uh, from what I understand, I don't know if this is true, maybe please correct me. I believe they're allowed to be open until one o'clock in the morning. Is that correct? You know? That's correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Chief Biagi has told me that hardly a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday are the police not told at that location and for trouble that's happening. That was the reason, in other words, I'm old fashioned man. Yes, keep it simple, stupid. We've been 100 some years here at BYOB, but we now have liquor licenses. All I need is somebody who needs to pay more attention because I've had friends that go up there. They're not serving food at 11 or 12 o'clock. They're still drinking at the bar on that floor. And it's only a matter of time so if somebody comes out, Chief Biagi, if you speak to him, he'd love to talk to you about it because we talked about this. He said, those young guys will come out before you know it. Somebody's urinating against somebody's car or they're having arguments and the police are there. We have the license now. I would assume the third license, has that not ever been purchased or has it? Has not been purchased. Not been purchased. We've not put it out. We've been oh, good, good. I love it. I love, you know, you have them too. And let's see how it works. Well, that's part of the reason. No. We didn't want to turn it on that quick. No, that is fantastic. Well, then, just to answer your question, yes. we, the, the, we discussed the, some of the things that have come up in the, in, the, in the startup of this first license. The owners have been very receptive to working with us, but um, we're not going to take those uh, any, any, any types of offenses like that lightly either. So it's uh, again, it's a pendulum. We've got to bring it back down to the middle. We expect it to be uh, food to be served while it's being opened and follow all the rules that, that the, uh, the, the, the I want to say. I want to say bye. I don't want more DWI and more people getting hurt. Well, and I remember, I have a seen. It's got to be a good thing. I haven't seen, I have not been in there, but I'm, I'm maybe I'm, I don't know. I've seen a plan that showed three bars in that thing. We were supposed to be for restaurants. So, so that part of the license includes the percentage of bar stools and tables. Now, this year, and so we did not want. A bar, bar. We wanted a, a restaurant that also had uh, the ability to, to have a bar within it. So we put the percentage in there, and according to the plans, they were uh, compliant. However, with COVID, there is no in there. Right. So, so we're, we're you know we're, um, we're trying to try to get them more seats outside, but um, again, it hasn't been ideal. But we are working closely with, with the police administration and. Great, great news. Thank you. Can't answer anymore. Uh, when the movie theater opens, they're having a restaurant, from what I understand, in the movie theater. I would like to realize this. Will people be able to sit and watch a movie and drink alcohol while watching a movie? Yes. Yes? Okay. You can get a full example. Of, well, you can't now because they're not open, but the, 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 the bar, they can. The you can bring food there. and beverages in to the theater with you. Yeah, no problem. I was curious about that. Uh, somebody has told me recently that the four hour, that parking is now four hours. In, yes. And that, when did that happen? Or I, I didn't know you got it. Was it You're not allowed to go to Paris next year. Okay. Just, I don't go to Paris. Just, in the spring. In the spring. Yeah. 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 I, didn't, I didn't know that. No, so that was in the space of the theater opening up and the movies being two and a half hours. Yeah. Long. <clears throat> you know, I have a plan for people come to me and answer these questions. So, no problem. Uh, but, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you hearing me. Uh, I'll try to speed it up. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer of a newsletter. I don't know if you're ever considering that anymore or whatever. It was a very successful. Everybody doesn't do Facebook. Everybody doesn't look at the website. I don't know. I was told once it was going to be quarterly, but during this period of time, it would be, that would be a good fall. It costs nothing. I'll leave it on that. Uh, last issue I think that I have, um, the people that have 14, 14 South Hillside, okay, that was a property that was a single family house. The developers came in to get it zoned for duplex. Uh, they were successful in the planning board. There was appeal. They were successful in the appeal. They appealed again, and they were once again successful within the last 10 days or so. 
the planning that we have an ordinance here, and we are a single family development. And that that area is a single family. There are duplexes there, grandfathered in. We were very nervous because it was going to set a precedent. If you took that one single family and made it to be a duplex, people were screaming about parking. We had all those meetings about parking. 50% of the people that live in North Beach do not have one parking spot off the street. So I'm only hoping the planning board are, they're appointed by the commissioners, I assume, the planning board members. Uh, we have a plan. We have planning board members who decide to take that single family zoning and forget about it and issue a good plan. That's untrue. That's not true. Tell, tell me that. I, I, it was adjudicated by a judge. The proper proofs were put on the record that justified the use of a duplex in that zone. In, at that particular location, it did not change zoning. At that particular location, it was approved because it met the criteria for a use variance. A judge upheld our planning board's decision twice. Mm -hmm. So that, that's all I'm gonna say about it because a judge, it's already been adjudicated twice. And okay. that's, that's how the zoning board works. So is the plan? So is the master plan that we have now thrown out the window? Then well, no, that's no. not how that works either. Okay. So, Mr. Langer, excuse me, Mr. Gerber. No problem. With all due respect, but if if we don't finish up the meeting shortly, I'm going to have to ask for a permit. No, no, I, Great. I don't that. want to do that to everyone. I appreciate that. Time. Thank you very right. much. Right. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Anyone else, Jim? May I speak? To close public portion. No, well, uh, we got uh, Gerard um, like to speak. I can't hear. Hold on, let me turn it off. Okay, go ahead. Please state your name and address. Yes, my name is Jerry Lipsky. I live at 5800 Edgewater Avenue in Bender Heights. I wanted to offer a compliment to the city and all, especially to Chief Biaggi about a recent issue that occurred here. On my street, which is one-way street, we've noticed a significant amount of wrong-way traffic. So when I was taking out my trash on Tuesday, I noticed three cars going the wrong way. So when I got back in, I wrote an email to the city and I reported my problems. I asked them if they could look at this signage and also consider putting up additional signs for like do not enter and such. The next day at two o'clock, I received a call from the, from the chief telling me that him and I believe it was the city engineer went out to the location, found a few missing signs and decided to add additional uh, do not enter signs. I mean, within like 15 hours of my email. I've never seen anything like that from a public official or a city employee. So I just really wanted to compliment you, the city, first of all, and especially the chief and the engineer. Uh, okay. And they also told me specifically what they did, what they found, who they talked to, and what they were doing about it. It was just Great. amazingly comprehensive. Oh, thank you. You know, it, it's funny that I know exactly where you live. And my sister, when we were growing up, she was on her bike coming off the bridge and a woman going down the wrong way on that street hit her head on. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. No, God bless, you know, she, she like flew up and- It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous, but she like got thrown from her bike in the air and but she was okay, but I know exactly, and people go on the wrong way. Someone's coming off of her bike, it, it's scary. When you say but, where, you, where you live, when you say people go on the wrong way, it took me back probably um, 45 years. Wow, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, just amazing how good the chief was. Cambridge. Just amazing. Oh, I can't hear what you're saying. Thank you so much for taking the time to um, acknowledge uh, Chief Biaggi and our city engineer, um, Ed Stinson. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Is there anybody else from the public who wishes to speak? Tim, following up on that, yes. we have the same issue on Cambridge right here. Hello? Okay. Yes. Someone do? Go ahead. Okay, hi, this is Sue Bretherick, 606 North Cambridge. Real quick, um, my question is about the uh, bathrooms on the fishing pier. Yes. Um, I think they're great. They're such a great improvement, I love them. Um, my question is, is there any way to increase the ventilation in there? It's, it's very warm and there's, there's no air. Uh, we'll look into that. Um, no, no looking there's no, okay, no. Got it. You can't do it with that? No, I had mine on so we could hear the woman in here. The windows are inoperable. Okay. They're not designed to open. Um, you know, there, there's one window in the boardwalk facing that is opened. Right. But that's the only one that we can actually open in the restroom area. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then, okay. Um, it is a seasonal building, so it's right. not something that's going to be shut down in the winter. Right. Not, 
notion of having an air condition was, was, was cumbersome for that type of building. So, um, Something else to maintain. So it is, I, I would just to, to say it's a seasonal building, so it's not climate controlled. Um, we raised the roof to try to get some of that convection out of there. Um, but um, again, there might, maybe there's some, we can bring it up, maybe there's some way of getting additional ventilation out of there to get more hot air out of there. There's but, fans that, that suck that hot air out, but we can't, can't cool it. You can't so cool it. Yeah, right. it's, not, it's not that type of a building. It's a, it's a, it's a seasonal building and, um, and, and to do that would be cost prohib would have been even more cost prohibitive. We were already kind of on maxing that out. Yes, we are. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, I have a comment. Can you hear me? Go ahead, yes. Sandra. Okay. Um, getting back to uh, safety, uh, I feel as though we need more police, more specials in today's climate. And I, for one, would be happy to pay more taxes to have more protection throughout our city. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Do I have a motion to close public portion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Do I have a motion? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.